Hi, John here. Today, 11th of September 2016, um, Sunday. Just having a little quiet time on the computer and ready to go to the gym. Have a bit of exercise. So, uh, today, we've done a bit of work on the tidal turbines um, for East Cape, uh, Ranfilly Bank. Uh, so I'm still working on that and trying to get a 3D um, animation of the turbine so at least you can see something of it uh, when I get around to it. I used to do a bit of um, solid works uh, but I've forgotten how to do it now so I'm just back on, uh, on that again and <clears throat> if we can get something uh, for people who are trying to figure out how it works. Um, keep explaining how it works. Uh, so as soon as I can find somebody to do it, an engineer, design engineer, if any of you out there interested in Auckland, uh, let me know. I think the sooner I get something graphic of what it looks like in pit picturesque form, uh, like the moving turbines, the better. Um, it will be put across and then I'm doing the um, shares um, a little bit of that but um, we we'll have a few people on Twitter uh, still joining in and um, every now and again there's a bit of a splurge of people and my phone um, people following um, so there is a lot of interest in the tidal turbines. Now we've got C uh, Wavestar, uh, big hydraulic turbine wave uh, motion power, and they use hydraulics as well as what we're using hydraulics. Um, only thing is we're doing it at depth on um, our plan, and that's a different uh, kettle of fish altogether with hydraulics at depth that you get more power and that's what we're harnessing. Um, there is at least uh, four moving parts in our system. Uh, you've got the blade that's on a variable pitch. Uh, that's one. Then you've got the um, uh, hydraulic piston at both ends. That's two. And then you've got the flywheel, that's the floating flywheel that's about a thousand tons or more uh, ballasted. So that's the generator, a DC generator rotor that's spinning and floating uh, with the uh, um, tidal, uh, with the axle and the shaft going through the middle of it. Uh, so th that'll give you an idea. So one blade, <coughs> pistons at both ends, the blade is moving out like that on the ends and the shaft is going up and down and then the turbine's spinning on top of the water, on the, under the water I mean, uh, one at the bottom, one at the top, under the water. So you don't see these <coughs> um, objects, they're inside like a cage, a cage inside a cage. And the outside cage holds the platform above the sea and the inside cage holds the turbine so that the inside cage rises out of the water on the outside cage bigger um, so that it's easy to maintain uh, a whole lot comes out of the water it's quite huge the outside cage is 50 by 50 meters square area down to with two blades, we've got two blades on the first one at Ranfilly Bank, so that's that's in a total space of 60 meters deep. On the shallowest part of the rocks is 40 or 35 meters, so we're fixing the bottom of these two cages onto the rock, and they're never never going to move. The legs are six meters on the big outside cage, and the inside cage is four meters. So <clears throat> you've got a lot of a lot of force inside those 
um, steel pipe cages and they're all tied together and slide up and down each other. The inside cage slides up on the outside cage so that it can all come out of the water. Easy to clean. We clean it, make sure no bar barnacles or anything on it, but there's enough force from the spinning um, flywheel uh, rotors, DC power electric rotors, um, to clean everything off and the thrust from the, um, the rocket engines that are running on the end of the turbines and the blades. So the turbine, which is the rotor spinning, floating, <coughs> one on the bottom of the shaft going up and down and one on the top of it, under the water. So it's at least um, 20 meter clearance from the top of the tide and at least a distance of um, six meters um, with the shaft. So that's shaft, flywheel and blade, three moving parts. That's it. That's it. The rest is the hydraulic hydrogen pistons that are in the building underneath the cage at the bottom that compresses the um, gas from splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen and the hydraulic rams uh, compress the gas into liquid hydrogen and <coughs> metal hydrogen. Okay, the two gases is our main product. So that's something that I wake up with and um, always want to do it, but my problem I have is with the um, raising the funds for it. So I'm waiting for a company now uh, from Australia. Um, if you're watching this video, I'm just waiting for your interest in it because uh, I want to make certain that we're raising five billion. Um, well, I've got US dollars, but it's supposed to be in in pound notes. Um, they're comparable. The US dollars. Um, 1.33 uh, pound notes or, or 1.33 US dollars to a pound note so it's not far off anyway I'm saying 5 billion to produce the power from the two blades which is a thousand megawatts I'm expecting a thousand megawatts from those two rotors and two blades that much power we're using hydraulics as mechanical power then we're using electricity as dc power then we're splitting the water using hydrogen liquid hydrogen as a, uh, storage of our energy not batteries storage as hydrogen liquid hydrogen in tanks that are four meter diameter by 12 meters long or more and they drone straight to the shore under its own power with rocket engines or supposed to be rocket engines or liquid hydrogen engines one of the two so those people can sort that out in um, my friend uh, Kevin um, Rice he's the hydrogen king man here in New Zealand in Torren uh, he'll be working with me on the project so he's got fuel cells and he um, is full-time in that hydrogen field and we've spent enough time together to sort this one out so Kevin to you watching the video uh, we'll get there soon mate um, just have to raise the funds and so we need five billion it works out like this in um, 2008 2008, uh, CGEN in Scotland, it cost 1.2 million per megawatt of power for the windmill type power generator under the sea. They took the windmill off the hill and put it under the sea. So that's only produced, it's 80 meter high, that's the size of it, it's quite big. 
and it um, costs 1.2 million per megawatt of power to produce uh, and uh, to build it. So with the C um, um, wave star, with the floats going up and down like that on the top of the water, that's going into the sea next year, or they've already got it in the sea already. I've got it on my Facebook site. Um, so that one is putting out um, <clears throat> six megawatts with 20 of these floats that are 10 meter diameter. It's quite huge in a 200 meter long distance area by 50 meters wide. So 20 meters, one on one side, one on the other side, going up and down like that. Okay, so that gives you a an idea of the size of it in shallow water inside the harbour. <clears throat> Six megawatts. So that one is is making electricity <clears throat> from hydraulics. So it pumps the water back to the shore to the generators. So that's the first beginning of this mass hydraulic power from the waves on top of it. So that systems cost two to three million per megawatt. I'd say it costs three million per megawatt of power to transport through pipes back to the shore and to make the power electricity on the shore. Now, uh, I think it's two million, two million. So with us going under the tide, it's going to cost more and to make hydraulic power, but we don't ship it back to shore. We are right out in the middle of the ocean, 50 kilometers or more out, at least 30 kilometers out, at the, at the East Cape, uh, Port Awanui, from Port Awanui out to Ranfilly Bank, it's roughly about 40 kilometers out. So we're going right out into the deep, deep water, and there, the lowest part of that Ranfilly Bank is 35 meters to 60 meters on that ridge on the top of the lowest part of the uh, rocky seabed. Okay, so it's ideal for us to go on top of the ridge and the waves, I mean the tide screams over the top and hits the blades. So that's where we're going with this and it needs to be rigid because of the amount of torque, uh, brake horsepower coming from the blades that, that they need to be really tough to stand full force. We're, we're not going to cut the power down to, to make it go less if it gets rough. We, we boost it up and yank it all out, the whole lot of it, the power. And so there's no compensation left out from getting the maximum out of the tide, moving tide. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the cost, I'm just going on about the cost. The cost for, for making electricity from hydraulics power through the turbines, the, the rotor is spinning at <coughs> 50 hertz, 1500 revolutions a minute. <coughs> That's in the water floating like a big tire tube, right? like a wheel, tire wheel going around, around, around. Imagine a mag wheel, a truck tire going round, 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 or a big forklift tire, a big log skidder going round, 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 round under the water. <coughs> that uh, is making our electricity, DC electricity, not AC, DC electricity. So it will cost three million, two million for that <coughs> other wave star because it's easy to go along the top of the water and the pipe goes under the water but that's two million per megawatt to build. Now it costs three million for us to make electricity um, and to store it in batteries on the site or in some other material. So rather than that expense, we're going one stage further by splitting water, <coughs> electrolysis, uh, electrolysis, split the water, then compress it with our hydraulic power. 
into liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and also metal hydrogen fuel, rocket fuel. <coughs> so now it's going to cost five million to do that. Why we do that go that stage further is that now we can store the um, power in metal hydrogen and also store it in big four meter diameter tanks <coughs> by 12 meters long and power it with rocket engines back to the shore or anywhere. It won't take long as drone GPS back back to where we want to put it but that's that's our method of storage and distribution of power rather than wires or pipes under the sea. So we're keeping the frequencies right out by keeping the power as DC not AC, DC, <coughs> and using it up under the bottom of the ocean on that spot. So we're only taking up 50 metres by 50 metres volume area by 60 metres deep. So 60 metres deep, 50 metres square volume. The amount of water going through that area at, say, 5 knots, we're stalling it out. We're putting a big wall up to stop it at one knot. Okay, that's our power. We're converting all of that ton force <coughs> into usable liquid hydrogen jet fuel and metal hydrogen rocket fuel. That's our product. Okay, so it would take <coughs> 5 billion at 5 million per megawatt of power, 1000 megawatts of power from the two blades. That's how much we're going to budget for to make it comfortable to build, and we should get three times as much back 15 billion revenue just from the hydrogen. Right? That's how this one works. It, it's, it's, that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. So we've got three moving parts, and the rest is hydrogen. There. And we use all our electricity up, the whole lot of it, to split the water. You need loads and loads of water to make hydrogen. Heaps of it. And there's plenty in the ocean, it's never going to run out. And it'll all go back to water. In the end, we use the water as clean water when we turn it back to electricity on the land. We can <coughs> use the liquid hydrogen in the jet engines to run generators on shore and sell it as normal electricity or use in hydrogen powered vehicles and machinery. We are going after the big heavy machinery for the liquid hydrogen and aircraft. We're hoping to get a market for that from this one cage inside a cage. The outside cage, once again, is 50 meter by 50 meter on six meter legs <coughs> by 60 meters deep plus above the water is another 20 meters. So that's 80 meters the whole structure size with the buildings above the sea level. They can go up and down, the buildings up. And the buildings at the bottom, around the cage, they go up out of the water too and lift the whole lot out. Right? It lifts the whole, <coughs> the outside cage lifts the inside cage out of the water, its legs and all. Okay? It's all in one piece so that it doesn't um, fall apart. It comes all out in one piece. And we can float the whole up out back to shore. Um, once it gets out, I can just unclip it and off it goes. So it's easy to dismantle, or we don't want to dismantle it, we clean it, regularly clean and check it out of the water. <coughs> and uh, the outside cage can be lifted off the inside cage as well. So 
so it can come up and check um, check its um, <coughs> cleaner as well. So we can work between the two of them in making it work. The inside cage is 25 meter by 25 meter. Okay, 25. Well, at least 25, 25, 30 meter, 30 meter on its whole structure with the legs, the turbine running at 25 meter. The turbine um, rotor, floating rotor, um, ballasted. It's there's two of them, one up there, one down there. So they are they are um, 25 meter. The rotor, and then you got the generator poles on the outside. Okay, the generator poles are in the building. So we've got one building at the bottom that slides up the outside cage, and we've got the other building in the middle <coughs> above the top rotor, and that goes up out of the water as well. And then you've got the building above the CB, and that can come down as well. CB, they can all float off on itself. It's just one big jack up barge inside the other. One jack up barge in the middle and the outside bigger jack up barge on the outside. So that's we're going to build them out of jack up barge material. Okay, so that's my little exciting news for the day. Uh, apart from um, um, what I'm doing with the investors, um, I'm hoping that we can attract the company in Australia <coughs> that for investors. Um, I got a reply from them, um, so I'll just wait and see if they can do anything about it. They might take a portion of it, <coughs> and uh, because their funding may not go that high, but I'm hoping that we can get something going next week. Uh, mind you, this is not an easy task to get funding for something as large as this. And once it gets going, that's just one. Once we get that, I mean, it's out there now. It's been out for a long time now, the idea of a bridge, three of these, one, two, three. That was the whole original idea. So you got a thousand, 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 that's three thousand megawatts in a 200 meter long bridge by 50 meters wide, the same size as Wavestar and their floating turbines, um, floating <coughs> um, hydraulic uh, system of power, sea hydraulics. Okay, so in that area they get 6 megawatts, we can get 3,000 megawatts in depth. The deeper you go, the more pressure there is per square inch of tons. You'll be surprised, surprised how much tons. What we're doing here is we're using our stored energy in metal. We've got the company in HB Technologies in Taiwan. I've got a verbal contract with them. That was in 2012. Babyton, that's his name, Babyton. He's the director, owner. I, uh, I've spoken to him back then, and he will provide us with the tanks, the um, solid metal hydrogen tanks, so that's not a problem. He said he'll build them, the fit aircraft, if and when the time comes. So we won't go down that track yet, as yet our, our main focus is to raise the funds to get something started on our land blocks. If you're watching this, um, FECE, I think it is, I'll just check the company that I have. Um, that is, um, I've got a long way to go back to find it, um, but anyway, the, the company in Australia, FECF or something, where did I put it? I put it somewhere. <clears throat> anyway, to them, if they're watching this video, um, I just forgot where I was now. Um, oh, sorry, we're, we're on our land blocks, 
at Eastgate. Um, um, we're hoping to get a lease on the land there at um, Port Awanui on the Hiranga A10 block and the Hiranga A12 block and A8 block. If we don't get it, or any of those sites, or in particular the A10 site, then we'll be coming to Australia, if you so wish. And that'll be the end of it. That's here, of no one really taking any interest. Whoever takes interest in this turbine, that's where it'll go, okay, to start things off. It didn't have to be here. <coughs> it can be anywhere in the world with this flag. We can fly around the world with this flag and trade um, with this tidal turbine. Okay, um, so I can't even see where I've written that um, name of that company. <coughs> anyway, um, I usually write notes, so I can't see where I put it. Anyway, um, um, so, um, it's ideal to have the site there at the East Cape because of the one-way tides that go to Chile from um, Port Awanui or from Ranfilly Bank 40 kilometres out. It's an ideal place where the tides come up over the highest part of the ridge. Uh, where it should be um, strong currents. Okay, that's ideal so that the turbine doesn't stop. It'll, it'll keep going one way all the time. But the idea of us storing <coughs> the hydrogen was to actually use the hydrogen to keep the rocket engines under the water on the ends of the blade tips. We've got four, four blades four blades, like this, like that, okay, so from the outside to the outside here is 25 meters, okay, it's got the shaft in the middle, okay, four meter shaft, and so it goes like that as it turns around, like that, around the shaft, the tide goes that way, five knots and this blade stops at that one knot or no knots and then that's where your power is okay so that is going up and down so we've got the blade as one moving part one moving part and like that and then you've got the floating rotor which stays in one place and you've got this going, I've got to, I hit my shaft, okay? So you've got that shaft that pumping the water up the top there and the bottom through the rotor, through the rotor to give us the water pressure to make the bearing go down through the middle, okay? <coughs> and then you've got the shafts going out that way that take the water to the end and out the ends of the blade out the ends of the blade okay out the end like that and it spins it so the water shoots out the end of the blade here and from that gives the extra push from the pump pump going up and down there okay so on top of that we've got the liquid hydrogen, uh, the rocket metal hydrogen, rocket engine in the middle and he's blowing it out too to keep that blade going, okay, keeps the blade going and also the <coughs> rotor, rotor at the top of the shaft, shaft and at the bottom shaft rotor rotor okay 
two rudders, <coughs> and they also got rocket engines in them to send them flying around. When there's no tide movement, and there's not enough tide movement around, <coughs> then the rocket engines keep the rotors going at the right frequency, 50 kilo, 50, <coughs> 50 hertz, 1500 revolutions a minute, while the blade is only barely turning. It's, it's, it's only going slow. It's only going at one knot. So one knot is going to take a, a long time to get around. I think the, all the big whales and the sharks will come up and have a scratch on the outside, their backs. Okay? So there's no, no, no. And the rotor that's spinning is flat anyway. So the, the rocket engines would blow them out of the way because they're on a slight angle out like that, they're, they're on a, not straight, they're out on an angle like that, so they're blowing out to get more push, all right, so it'll take, it'll make the blade wider, out, out the edge and give it more push, that's how we're getting extra force, and with the, what do we have here is we've got the coils around here, DC coils around here, and we've got what we call magnetothermohydrodynamics. That's magnets here, and the water going through creates more current. We're getting an extra 0.4 megawatts out of a megawatt. That's a hell of a lot out of each of these <coughs> venturies. All right? That's our big secret of getting nothing for something, or something for nothing out of the power, why we get so much extra power. So for each of the rocket engines underneath, there's one on each blade, so there's one, four, eight, eight rocket engines pulling out an extra 0.4 megawatts of a thousand megawatts, okay? So you work that out. That's how we've managed to get the thousand megawatts of power <coughs> mildly on top of the uh, amount of hydraulic power that's spinning those rotors around, two rotors around, right? Um, so we got two rotors spinning, that's two. We've got the shaft moving up and down, that's three moving parts, and then we've got the blades going up and down, that's four, four moving parts. That's it, people. All the rest is the hydraulic pistons working off, we've got a cam running um, off this shaft, there's a cam running, like a off four, four corner cam that pushes the pistons, big hydraulic pistons, in the buildings where we're making the hydrogen, we can walk around in there under the sea right at the bottom, 60 meters down, inside the building where the hydrogen is being um, compressed into the tanks and all the tanks on the outside <coughs> um, hooked up and filling up and off they go to shore, those, those big steel tanks, it's, it's weightless under the water and they drive themselves there so there's nobody needed to run that lot. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what we need the funding for. I know it sounds big, but that's a size matters most when it comes to power generation. Um, so uh, that's that's about all I wanted to say there, really, um, to the investors I'm appealing to. <coughs> Today on this Sunday, um, um, the 11th of uh, September 2016. Now, other news that we have um, with the court case, pending court case um, with Cook Street, I'm just going to leave that for the moment until we get this investment part sorted because of the lease on the land is on the 1st of October and I wanted to get that part done and put my attention towards that on the heading of land blocks at the east coast and um, our friends down there um, um, waiting um, patiently. Um, I'm going to get 
managers to look after the place and run it as a business and it will be fully functional once we get the funding in place and I'm hoping to get cracking with the whole lot um, on a major scale um, properly done <coughs> so that you can see a return on investment on using land and resources in the sea. We've got a lot of things to do yet to get down that far. At least we've got uh, some support from the Marae um, at uh, Port Awanui, uh, Te Hora Marae, uh, Iru Painga, and uh, also Bryce and Bill um, Te Maru at Te Kapa Marae, um, supporting me and this concept. There is a lot of interest from people online, that's the ones I'm appealing to, being being patient and waiting. Um, so it's taken this long to actually figure this one out um, without too much funding or any... Um, I could have got something set up already on Google and YouTube, um, but that's a lot of work to do yet. I have to do all that myself. I've got a lot of ideas how I can do that to attract a lot of investors. So um, it just depends on what frame of mind I'm in. And today it was tidal turbines and um, always refining the uh, method of how we construct it. That's, I'm doing this online so that you can see that there's no other ideas like this. And I'm claiming this as under the Moai brand name patent. That's our own patent under our own flag of jurisdiction in Britain, UK, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited Limited Company. <coughs> it's registered, uh, so we have to start getting that moving. And all our managers and directors will come to, uh, uh, from countries that we deal with. So if you're thinking of joining Moai, then this is an opportune time for you and your country to have one of these um, sitting there ready to go. We're only going to do the single um, cage. Um, system for now until it proves itself then we can add them on in the sea and make a whole big city in the middle of the sea with these things. So we get one going to get the rest going and it's quicker to put, drop them anywhere around the world. But the idea of the three or four was to get the airport on there, the main um, main airline, passenger airline and military air, air base on the platforms once we got one of them built then that would um, fire off the new uh, British Labcat A2 plane and that's run on liquid hydrogen okay that's our ultimate goal and we will have no more ships bobbing up on top of the sea that will all be down under the ocean running on uh, rocket fuel with, from one station to the other. So we can go to the next station, uh, might be 1,000, 2,000 miles away on one hop to the next one to refuel. And so we're carrying passengers quickly, quicker under the water than up in the sky this way. Okay? So that's how this is going to work. And um, um, <coughs> it'll be a, a good investment um, and guaranteed at that because the sea will never run out of power. It just depends where we put these things. That's what I'm saying. It needs um, depth. It needs rock bottom because the sand it'll pull out. There's no doubt about that. No matter how much concrete you put in, it'll pull out. The hydraulics will pull it out. It needs solid rock. Okay, so that's that part. Um, and the other part um, that I want to talk about is the um, Cook Street. I'll leave that. I'll leave that uh, till a little bit later because I've got till um, the end of September. 
uh, Octo at the end of October to get the title projects going, then the land blocks um, with manager in it and everything going there. Um, the other things I wanted to do was um, to um, no, that, I think that was all. No, that, nothing much else. Um, I'll think of it later. Uh, in the meantime, I'm off to the gym. I'll get some exercise in. And um, have a nice day. We'll see you later. Bye.